Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500 and welcome back to Project Geno. Today we are going to do the dashboard. Today is day two. We're going to do the dashboard and airbags today. Get those done so next week we can probably get the, if uh, Paul is free, we'll get the windscreen done as well. So let's get on with it. So as you saw last week, um, or this week, on Wednesday, I did I did all the front. It's not it's not finished, but I wanted to move on to the dashboard. Um, the leak, I thought I'd sort it out. It's still leaking. I thought it had, fin it had stopped, but look at that. It's half full. So it's leaking a lot. Bearing in mind the engine's not even been running, so it's not even under you know any pressure of the water pump pushing it round. It's just, I don't know. I'm sort of hoping that that um, plug has cross-threaded and it's just leaking slightly. I mean, it's been sitting here for over a week now. And that, oh God, it was the door closing. Uh, and that's how much has leaked out. So it's quite a lot. Um, plus what I lost over the driveway went before I even realized. So yeah, not good, not good. Uh, but today, as I say, I'm gonna be doing the dashboard and airbag. Uh, as I say, Paul the from Windscreens Direct uh, has already bought my screen. Uh, when I saw him last week, um, he told me that, uh, you know, give him a call and he'll come and do it. So. Uh, I'm in no particular rush, but I thought, you know, as he's got the screen, I might as well get this, it's got to be done, the dash and that, so I might as well get that done, and then he can come and do it. A um, couple of people have asked me about the uh, mechanic that I used on um, on the on the sea. Uh, this is a fellow, his name's Glenn, uh, and he's GW Mobile Mechanic, and there's his Facebook page, facebook.com slash Glenn1802 Mobile Mechanic, and there's his phone number down there. 07568 966 563. It says there he covers London and Kent. I'm sure he'd go slightly further afield because obviously Kent goes right down to the Kent coast, but you know, a few miles away you go into the Surrey border from where we are. So, you know, if, you, if you're anywhere near me, um, certainly within, you know, Kent, Surrey, Surrey London, etc., etc., I'm sure Glenn will sort you out. Really good bloke, really nice bloke, really knows his stuff and is, is really, really well priced as well. Um, he told me, I think, I can't remember if I mentioned this on the previous video, we were talking about cam belts, um, and I said to him about the quote I'd been charged from a garage that I used for an MOT, and they wanted, um, what was it, 560 something quid to do cam belt and water pump. He said to me, he could do a cam belt without a water pump in about half an hour. He can get a bumper off in three minutes. <laughs> that's quicker than me and I've done quite a lot of them um, that's much quicker than me but yeah doing a cam belt in half an hour is amazing he said cam belt walk pump he said about an hour because obviously it's got to drain down refill and so on and so forth so yeah I mean that is an amazing obviously based on an hourly rate that's going to be really cheap um, so I think he gave me a, he gave me a price an all-in price included parts which I can't remember what it was now but um, yeah I recommend him. So if you need anything doing, there's something you can't do, or you need a mechanic and you're anywhere near me, Glenn's your man. So thanks Glenn, thanks for your help. Um, I want, there's another shout out I'm gonna do as well after this, uh, but I'll leave that till a little bit later because I wanna get on with this. Uh, one more thing I want to show you before we start. So yeah, just quickly, I just wanted to uh, say another big thank you to uh, one of our subscribers. Um, embarrassingly, I've forgotten his name, um, but, let me just explain what happened. So um, a week or so ago, I think it was at the weekend, um, I was in the garden um, digging and uh, wasn't doing anything car related. I was in the garden digging uh, and there was a ring at the bell on the doorbell uh, and I was expecting an Amazon parcel. So I said to my wife, um, that's probably Amazon. Can you, can you just um, go and grab it? So she came out the back gate here, the doorbell, as I say, doorbell rang. She came out the back gate and standing up by the front door was um, one of my subscribers, which I didn't know at the time, of course. Uh, and he came down and he said to it, I just wanted to come around and say thank you. Um, I watched one of your videos and uh, my daughter had caved in the wing of her car and I used your video on how to do it. So I obviously saved him money. But the reason I'm telling you all this is because in his hand he had this. A bottle of, a box of 12 bottles of Sol Febeta. How nice of that. I haven't opened them yet. 
because I didn't want to open them because I wanted to be able to show you when I did this video that he'd given me that case of beer. How nice is that? So thank you very much for that and I really, really wish I could remember your name. So if you see this video, please uh, drop a comment and give me your name so I can uh, remember it. So yeah, that's really nice of him. So thank you very, very much for that. It was really appreciated. Um, yeah, great stuff. Anyway, so that's the little shout outs that I wanted to quickly do. Luckily, it's only taken me a minute and a half to do that and we can get on with this car. So what I'm going to do, I am going to set Unfortunately, because it's the bank holiday, my neighbour is not at work today, so his car's there. Now, I don't want to put this car up the driveway, so I'm going to have to try and do it with the space that I've got. Um, but I think what I will do, uh, I can, you know, I can open the doors and do what I've got to do to take the dash out where it is. Uh, what I will do is, uh, once I've got the, all the, all the, everything off so the dash is ready to come out, I'll just reverse the car up the drive, which you can do, you know, you can drive it with, uh, with no dashboard in. Um, reverse it up the driveway, take the dash out, whack the new dash into position and then bring it back down again just in case he wants to go out. Um, I don't want to just move it up there just in case anything happens and he can't he can't get his car out. So, so you know, we've got to keep the neighbours happy. So that's where we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to probably come back in every now and again with, with the camera uh, and, you know, at various points and say this is what we've done. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set you up on time lapse. I'm going to put the camera, I'm going to put the back seats down and try and set up the camera out in there somehow and see if we can do it that way. Um, if you want to see a video on how to do it, which I've filmed quite some time ago, I'm not sure what the sound was like on that video, but I think it's okay. Um, if not, I might redo that one one day. But I'll put the link to it above here now. If you want to watch that, click on that link. And I'll also put a link to it at the end of the video. Um, so if you want to watch this entire video and then you want to watch step-by-step -step guide on how to do it there, there's your um, there's your thing to do the steering wheel although the steering wheel is currently placed in position uh, I have already taken the cowlings off and took the airbag off and the steering wheel so that bit's already done but you saw that in the last video so obviously I've just got to retake the steering wheel off that's all and then we'll crack on so with no further ado and waffling let's get on with it Try and do it without moving the car. I think we should be able to. So make sure I'm not catching anything around the ignition. Catching, something's catching. What's it catching on? Something's catching, and I don't know what. It's under here somewhere. Oh, what's this cable? I've got a cable that's catching here. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna have to get in the other side and have a look. I don't know if it's just got. It's not something I haven't unplugged. I don't think. And see it. the hell? And I think it's just got caught. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Right, back around the other side. I think it was the, um, the coloured dash panel plug that just got caught. This is why you don't just yank it. <laughs> you end up ripping a plug off. But 
there we have it. There we have it. One dashboard out. That didn't take long. Whew. Right. That was pretty good, wasn't it? That didn't take long at all. I know you saw it on time lapse, but it really didn't take very long at all. I could almost do this with my eyes closed now. I'm just going to get these out of the way. So that's stereo. Hopefully won't be going back in there. We'll be putting the new seven inch screen stereo in there. Right, the only other thing I've got to do here is take the airbag out. Which will obviously be the first thing back in. Two plugs, one either side. Which are always tricky to get out. You have to de oh, that's it. You have to depress the little tab and then pull it. But sometimes it don't want to come. There we go. That came out quite easy. Right. Already taken the airbag one out. Uh, the uh, knee airbag out. If you notice that. Um, that's it. That is it. Okay. Right. So that's everything out. And now it's a matter. Just putting everything back again. And I'm just going to take a couple of pictures for um, Instagram, and I'm also going to do a couple of very short videos because uh, people often ask where things are. Um, so I'm just going to point some out and put them on a very short video, very very short video. Um, yeah, so I'll be back uh, on time lapse when we put it all back together again, and then we'll come back the other end. Um, and then we'll maybe think about offering that stereo. I'm really looking forward to getting that installed. I was going to say all done, it's not quite all done. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen my picture uh, and you would have seen that the reason it's not all back together, oh, excuse me, um, is because I'm going to put the new seven inch screen stereo in there. So for better access, I don't, I don't know, I don't, probably not, I don't reckon that the Fiat cage has to go back in there, so I've left it off for the time being. Um, I've got a feeling they've actually got to come out as well because I think it completely fills that area because uh, it includes vents in it as well. So although I, ha although I have screwed that on, I'm probably going to have to take that off because, um, yeah, I think it fills that entire aperture. But we'll see. Um, we'll get it out in a minute. And we're gonna, I'm going to do a separate video for that. Um, I haven't put that back on yet or that or the tray down the bottom because um, there, there is a possibility I might have to run another live from down there. Um, so 
I haven't done that in case I do because it's just better access. Um, I've got some piggybacks so I can put a piggyback fuse in if necessary and run a, a new bit of wire up to there. Um, this does happen sometimes that you might have to have another permanent live or possibly another switched live so whichever it is. Um, back in the old days when we used to do these stereos, um, I'm talking when I say the old days I'm talking about going back to the 80s when uh, when I had like Ford Escorts and Ford Capris and things like that, that shows you how long ago it was. Um, we used to change the stereos all the time. The stereo that came in the Ford Capri, for instance, was a load of old rubbish. Well, they were all a load of old rubbish. So I don't know if any of you are with me on this. I know some of you um, that are around the same sort of age as me or older um, will probably um, remember, and hopefully it wasn't just me and my mates who did it, the standard stereo, we'd put a nice, I say nice by the, by the, the, the age you know by the the time it was then a nice stereo in which was radio fm and cassette nothing spectacular no such thing as cds no such thing as digital obviously so that was a cassette uh which if you had dolby noise correction on it you know it was even even better it was fantastic if you had dolby on it obviously stereo yeah we're not that old that we didn't have stereo but what we'd also do is often it would be installed down here somewhere would be a graphic equaliser with flashing lights <laughs> and they were so cool just after flashing lights uh, and when you when you fitted those new stereos sometimes it would not work properly uh, and you would have to for some bizarre reason which i never actually understood is you have to swap out so you normally you would get the red which is the light i see on the on these i ain't got a clue which which wires which and i'm hoping with the uh, i've got a, a, a an iso converter and I'm hoping that it just does it and it's all labelled up and I know exactly what's what. Otherwise, I'm going to have to look into it a little bit more. I'm hoping it's going to be literally plug and play. I could be completely wrong. Um, but what often happens is you, you, in the old days, you used to have a red, which was a permanent live, and you'd have a yellow, which was a uh, switch live. So, i.e. It, it was only powered when the ignition was switched on. Therefore, the, the, the live that's all the time used to keep the memory so you, your radio stations and what have you if you disconnected that you'd lose all your radio stations it, modern stereos it's obviously written into the rom um and that doesn't happen you know the stereo i've taken out whatever radio stations are on it if i put that back in now it would retain those radio stations that are already programmed in uh, and you don't need the pin number either because the pin number is hard coded into it the only time you need the pin number is if you put that stereo into a different fit 500 Back in the old days, it didn't work like that. You disconnected your, your permanent live and you lose everything. But obviously you want a permanent live, which is live when the ignition is off, to give you a little bit of power to, to retain that. And the yellow live was the ignition live. So when you turn your ignition on, the stereo came on. Now, those types of things aren't an issue anymore. So I don't know whether that is still a case on these, on these head units. Lots of people, have fitted these um most of it problem free i think but um which obviously doesn't bode well for me because you can bet your life i'm gonna have some problems but that will be uh on another video as i say although i will be including it in this video but on time lapse so if you want to uh see that video that video will probably be out after this one um, so you'll be seeing it in time lapse and you'll see the finished product which i will show you in this video but um I will explain more what I'm doing and do it more in real time on the video that will be specifically for this stereo. So I'm quite excited about doing this. I've not done one of these stereos for many, many, many years. I think, actually I did one in, I did an Extrons one, which I got from God knows where, eBay or Banggood or someone like that, um, which I did in my Nissan Duke that I had a few years ago. Uh, and that was absolute rubbish. It was easy enough to install, but the actual thing itself, the stereo was all right. It was the the Bluetooth, the the um, the quality of the calls was just atrocious. So I'm hoping that this is going to be better. Even if it's not, you know, it will still have a seven inch screen and it'll be a learning curve because if it's not very good, next time I'll buy a different one. But I've been dying to do this for ages. I've had this stereo for a few months now and, and not put it in, but now, this car is worthy of it because there's plenty of money in it so we'll be back in a bit and we'll continue uh with the stereo and then we'll come back uh once the stereo's in and working we can put everything else back together uh and then that'll be done and then we can get paul to come do the windscreen i might message him now actually uh so that's enough of my waffle for the time being as you can see the steering wheel 
cowlings and steering wheels all in, airbags, new airbags on, new knee airbag is on, gear sticks all put back together. I haven't put the side bits on yet on this side because I don't know at this point whether I'm going to need to take the airbag ECU out and get that uh, data wiped. I'm hoping once this is all done and the seat belts and pre-tensioners are done, I'm hoping that it will cancel itself out and it won't have that crash data because it was, if you remember, it was shown as intermittent. Normally with intermittent, you fix things and it goes away. So I didn't want to take it out if I don't need to, um, but you know, if we do, we will. So I will be back very shortly. Uh, we'll get that stereo out. And as I say, you'll be seeing it on time-lapse uh, and I will put a link at the end of this. Um, let me just explain. So, okay, so this, this video is Sunday's video. The one for the stereo won't be for, I don't know, a week or so. When I've uploaded that stereo video, I will put a link to it just here and I will also put a link to it at the end of this video but as you're seeing it now if you're seeing it on Sunday now that link won't be there because I haven't uploaded that particular video I hope that makes sense so yes so we'll be back I'm gonna have some lunch and then we're gonna come back and get this in I'm really excited about getting this working problem is I can't play the music that's on it because obviously that'll mess up me uh, my YouTube algorithms but uh, obviously I, I, I can play I'm gonna put the Jubilee on it I put Radio 2 or something on it with the Jubilee as it's a uh, Jubilee Bank holiday day today um, so yeah so we'll be back just installed Waze on this because I pref much prefer Waze and uh, rather than Google Maps but yeah this is looking the business I think the fact that I can have Waze on it is a is a bonus but um, yeah it's uh, it's tethered to my phone the Wi-Fi on my phone we couldn't retrieve your location <laughs> please make sure your phone's location settings are turned on select country I guess I've got to set it up haven't I United Kingdom um, but yeah, the GPS works. Um, GPS works fine on Google Maps, but uh, yeah, what do you think? So the only minus point I can see is is the vents, because the vents, I think probably it will be better. Lock in with smart lock, I don't know what that is. I think it would be better to um, get started. Where were you born? I will do that in a second. Um, block those vents up, because although the vents are pushing the air out there are holes there they're not connected to it so it's just sort of hitting the back of the stereo so I think it's probably best to block those up and then the air would come out of these side ones instead I think that would probably be better come out both side ones if you if you have it set to that so we've got two USB sockets we've got uh, GPS we've got um, Wi-Fi haven't got Apple CarPlay um, reversing cameras we can install so I bought I bought a couple of those no radio at the moment because I need to get another one of those um, aerial adapters which is really annoying but uh, yeah I am really pleased with it at the moment lots more work to do on the car I can contact Paul and tell him he can come and do this windscreen whenever he wants now um, yeah well pleased with it what do you think
what you've just seen of me finishing it off on time lapse. Uh, as I say finishing it off, it's not actually finished as such. Um, we've still got bits and pieces to do. There's, there's a couple of things. So it doesn't, it, 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 it's not that stable in there. It moves backwards and forwards. I don't think it'll rattle around, but it, and it's not going to fall out. But if you grab hold of it, it will, you, you could literally just lift it out. So that, I, th I think some sort of double-sided tape. I've got some Gorilla tape up there. I think that's probably um, the best thing to use, but I'm gonna stick some posts out on Facebook and what have you, and other people who've, who've installed similar ones and see what they've done. Um, a couple of things, there's no RDS on it, which is a bit unfortunate. If there is, I can't find the settings, but there doesn't appear to be any RDS in it. So therefore you don't, it doesn't display the name of the station, only the frequency. Um, there's a wire that I've got to join, which goes to the, for the illumination. I'm assuming that's the lights down the side, um, which comes on when you switch your lights on. So somehow I've got to wire it into the light switch. I don't really want to do that. So what I think I'm probably going to do, and if you've got a better way, please tell me, uh, I'm going to wire it into the switched ignition live. So it only comes on, um, it, sorry, it comes on whenever you switch the ignition on. Therefore, it's on during the day and night. I don't think that really matters. Um, but if, again, if you've got a, a better idea, then please let me know. Um, so there's that, the RDS. Uh, it's not Apple CarPlay, but it is working playing from my phone on Bluetooth. It also works from playing on a USB cable. There is a separate video. What you've just seen on time-lapse, some of that will be in real time on the video that I've put together on the install. Again, you know, that video is not a how-to series. Uh, sorry, it's not a how-to video. It will be in the how-to series uh, folder playlist, but it's not certainly not a how-to. It's just my experience of fitting this. So all in all, I'm pleased with it. Uh, as I've said a few times, I think, if it was my car and I was keeping the car, I'd put a slightly better one in. I'd put, well, probably put one with Apple CarPlay, certainly with RDS. Um, you can, you can attach a camera to it. I think one of those USB sockets, I think USB 2 on that, is meant to connect. It says to a, a data recorder, or no, not data recorder. Basically, I think a web, uh, uh, not a webcam, um, a dash cam. So I think you can actually view the dash cam and possibly even record onto it. You can certainly view it on the screen, which would be quite cool. Uh, I think that's what that's for. Um, and I have got a dash cam which I think has got an ordinary USB lead on the end, so I might actually just plug it in and see what it does. Um, but we'll, we'll cover that on a, on a future video on this car. So we've still got a long way to go on this car, um, but I, wanted, I just wanted to show you sticking this stereo in. So what do you think about it? Good? Bad? Indifferent? Would you have got something else? I think it's good. But anyway, that is the almost the end of this video. Um, just before we go, uh, I wanted to bring your attention to another channel. So there's a, a fella who uh, also does Fiat 500s, um, and I think he does other cars as well, uh, but he's done at least two that I know of, and he's just bought an Arbath. Now, I want to do another Arbath on the channel, but he's uh, beat me to it in getting one. He's, bought, he's just bought a 2010, I think it is, uh, black Arbath, uh, which was a stolen recovered. The video went live yesterday, so if you're watching this on Sunday, his video went live on Saturday. Today is Friday, so I haven't even seen it yet. I've only seen pictures of it that he, uh, we had a little converse on Instagram uh, and he sent me some pictures of it. So I know what it looks like, I know what he's got. But if you wanna have a look, the channel name, and I'll put a picture of the channel up on the screen now. The channel name is Car Salvage 101. So go and take a look. His name is Alex. Uh, and as I say, he's done a couple of Fiat 500s at least. Uh, and he has now got that template our bath, which hopefully will be a, a good quick flip for him. But Car Salvage 101, go and take a look. So that is now the end of this video. Um, we're not complete on the dash install because I don't want to put everything back until such time as I've got this stereo in permanently and finished and what have you. So for the time being, that's it. We've, we'll, we'll continue on the car next week and we'll carry on with the front. I still haven't sorted that leak out. I need to empty that thing actually. Um, and then we'll sort that leak out. Someone mentioned that they saw the leak on the, uh, under the washer bottle, uh, under the um, filler bottle. That wasn't a leak. That's where I'd overfilled it. And when I started the engine, it gushed over. So there's no leak down that end. It's all over the other side. Um, so yeah, so we'll be back on that next week. So again, thanks for watching. 
Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful for some of you, and I know some of you have been bugging me to put this stereo in a car, because I've had the thing about two or three months and I've not really had a car worthy of putting it in until this one. Plenty of money in this car, so it was worth spending it. Windscreen needs doing. Hopefully Paul will be coming around next week and getting this windscreen done, and then we can get on. Once that front's done and, and are clean, there's not really much else to do apart from possible service. Um, I haven't tracked down the service history yet, so I've got to do that. It's got to go for MOT, but yeah, there's not really an awful lot more after that front is sorted to do. Only thing we're doing is waiting for the bumper, of course. Uh, I haven't actually taken it down yet. The bumper's going down for a paint on Monday, and they're going to send off um, a piece of of the old bumper uh, to try and get it to match. So that, that's the thing that's gonna slow me down, which is why I'm not in too much of a rush about this stereo. But enough of my waffling. I know I keep getting berated by one or two people for my waffling. Channel waffle, that's what it is. Anyway, shut up, Paul. Right, that's it. Thanks for watching. As always, if you're not a subscriber, hit that button. We'll see you next time. So take care, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>